A man named Albert Pike once said, whenever the people need a hero, we shall supply him. He said this in 1871. Now fast forward a couple hundred years and tell me, what do you see on TV? What's on the trend? DC, Marvel superheroes. You're Bruce Wayne's from the Batman series. You think this is done by accident? No way. And that is Bruce Wayne's grandfather, Mrs. Cooper? His great-grandfather. I understand he was tapped for skull and bones. Tapped for it? Sir, he founded Skull and Bones. You were both in Skull and Bones, the secret society. It's so secret we can't talk about what it. What does that mean for America? The conspiracy theorists are going to go wild. I'm sure they are. I don't know. I haven't seen the web. Number 322. <laughs> you both were members of Skull and Bones, a secret society at Yale. What does that tell us? Uh, not much, because it's a secret. <laughs> Is there a secret handshake? Is there a secret code? I wish there were something secret I could manifest. There. 322, a secret number? Uh, there are all kinds of secrets, Tim. Look, I look for... Are you prepared to lose? No, I'm not going to lose. The face of NBC's long-running Meet the Press has died. NBC News says he had suffered an apparent heart attack. Tim Russert was 58 years old. So through our tears, let us know the blessings of knowing and loving you, a great and noble man, the best father a son or daughter could have. And in our grief, let us smile knowing that dad is hugging Robin and holding mom's hand again. We have before us the opportunity to forge for ourselves and for future generations a new world order, a world where the rule of law, not the law of the jungle, governs the conduct of nations. When we are successful, and we will be, we have a real chance at this new world order, an order in which a credible United Nations can use its peacekeeping role to fulfill the promise and vision of the U.S. But I warn you, if you make any further inquiries, or if you say a single word to anyone about what you have seen, there will be the most dire consequences for you and your family. Do you understand? Accept or reject? Accept. That works anyway. How does it feel being a woman? Why do you want to know? <laughs> Gentlemen, I will remind you, you have all taken an oath of secrecy. You have been chosen to become members of America's most secret society. For over a hundred years, Skull and Bones members have included a president, vice presidents, Supreme Court justices, congressmen and senators, captains of science and industry, the very best of America. Their father, their father, their advisor, their better or their advisor, or bomb or right. I take it very personally. Edward, we're all in this together. Come back inside. We're brothers for life. Tell us, Mr. Wilson, brother to brother, something you've never told anyone before. 
your most guarded secret. Something you will need to trust us with. There's also real life billionaire superheroes like Elon Musk. And somehow I completely missed the fact that his X symbol forms a perfect Masonic compass. Nothing to it, I'm sure. It's just a coincidence. And this is Twitter staff a couple years ago. Oh, you know, just casually flashing the one eye symbolism, that's all. And when I'm talking about superheroes, I don't just have in mind grown men in spandex suits that look ridiculous. That's aimed at the youth. It's fantastic. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Good idea for an electric jet. You do? Yeah. Then we'll make it work. <laughs> because in today's world, the superhero could as well be a politician or a religious leader. If you have been with me for quite some time, you know where this is going. So, is the world being prepared to worship their real life idols? Absolutely. America needs a superhero. A very special congratulations to Javier Malay on a great race for President of Argentina. Truly make Argentina great again. Ministerio de Trabajo, Empleo y Seguridad Social. Afuera. Al zurdo de mierda no le podés dar ni un pero, milímetro. Pero me puede definir zurdo de mierda que no Todos los que, digamos, los colectivistas, <risa> los que ponen, digamos, o sea, esa idea. A ver, ¿Por qué es? le pones de mierda, digamos? Porque son una mierda. not a magical pot of money out there that we can go dip into. It's straightforward. Congress has got to provide the funding or the United States cannot continue to support Ukraine. Ministerio de Transporte, afuera. Ministerio de Salud, afuera. Se acabó el curro de la política. ¡Viva la libertad, carajo! And Millet has hurled a series of attacks against the Pope, calling him an imbecile who defends social justice, a son of a bitch preaching communism, the representative of the evil one on earth. President-elect Javier Millet had recently apologized for his past comments about Pope Francis. That included calling him an imbecile and a communist. It is unworthy of a candidate to say the things he said. To say that social justice is bullshit? Excuse the word, when social justice is part of the gospel, part of the church's social doctrine. It appears that in recent months, Millet has lowered or has been forced to lower the tone of his statements about Pope Francis. Yo no voy a la iglesia, voy al templo. No hablo con sacerdote. Tengo un rabino de cabecera. Estudio la Torah. Digamos, se me reconoce internacionalmente como amigo de Israel y, y estudioso de la Torah. ¿Te angustiaste? Que es casi, digamos, como... Eh. Digamos, yo estoy a poco, ¿no? De ser, de ser judío, decís. Sí, que... exacto. Digo, sí. Solamente me falta el pacto sí. de sangre. Pero una de las cosas que yo propuse, digo, además de alinearme con Israel y con Estados Unidos, mm. una de las cosas que yo dije es, yo quiero mudar la embajada desde Tel Aviv a Jerusalén. A Jerusalén. A Jerusalén. Y los que sabemos de qué se trata eso, sabemos lo que implica. Es un lío geopolítico sí. importante. Importante. Está bien, pero digo, yo tengo la... Pero es un... Para hacerlo. Sí, 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 sí. Está claro, ¿no? Está claro. Bueno, sigo, sigo porque fue un momento... Wow. Es más, te voy a contar algo. Sí. Si soy presidente, mi primer viaje es a Israel. Sí, creo que te lo había escuchado. ¿Antes que a Washington? ¿Antes sí. que ir a ver al fondo? 
el fondo es otra cosa. El fondo, digamos, es una cuestión, digamos, claro. vinculada a la, a la economía. Claro. Esto Primero, es una cuestión política. Viaje... Como simbólico querés ir a Israel. Ok. Sí, exacto. Eh... Digo, ya que me hicieron 357 mil operaciones por las cuales no me pude dar el gusto de ir al Cotel, eh, al muro. El muro, el muro de los lamentos. ¿Me comprendés? O sea, por lo menos. Digo, digo, siendo presidente no me vas a molestar. Me voy a ir. Yo te y nadie me va a operar. So, I would think you're a Catholic, you said, you're just defending really the Catholic life principle. The Pope, the current Pope is from Argentina. I would think he would support you. He has instead criticized you and you've called him a communist. The current Pope is from Argentina. I would think he would support you. He has instead criticized you and you've called him a communist. Why the disconnect? El Papa juega políticamente. Es decir, es un, un Papa donde tiene fuerte injerencia política. Ha demostrado, además, una gran afinidad con dictadores como Castro o como con Maduro. Es decir, está del lado de, de dictaduras sangrientas. Wait, I'm sorry, Raúl Castro es un murderer. Sí, y Fidel Castro también era otro asesino. You believe the Pope has an affinity for Raúl Castro? Sí, exacto. Tiene afinidad por los comunistas asesinos. De hecho, no los condena. Es decir, es bastante condescendiente. Es necesario que las personas que lo hagan deban ser omniscientes, omnipresentes y omnipotentes. Es decir, creen que son Dios. Y le voy a contar algo. No son Dios. Y le voy a decir algo peor. Son tan miserables y tan rastreros los políticos, y en especial los de izquierda, que además están debajo de las personas promedio. You know, Javier Milei at this point is a complete and total character, especially with his silly hairstyle. He resembles another colorful politician from the Netherlands that's gaining popularity rapidly. Gert Wilders, often called the Dutch Trump. And his wife, interestingly enough, is from a Hungarian Jewish family. When are people going to realize it's all a show? These are religious views of Wilders. It says here, Wilders is an agnostic, but he has stated that he thinks Christians are my allies and that they fundamentally should want the same thing. I think that what you see happening today in the United States is quite similar to what we see all over Europe. We see that a growing amount of people feel misrepresented, feel even abandoned by their political leaders, the political elite today. They see uh, problems every day when it comes to losing their jobs or terrorism or immigration or Islamization or crime, even often on a daily basis. And um, they see that the current leaders are not addressing it, are still being very politically correct. And now we have a leader, I hope he will be the next um, um, president of the United States that says, well, um, I'm not being politically correct. I'm going to address all those issues. And the normal people, what the Americans call the blue collar people, are very enthusiastic about that. And you see in Europe, with my party and other countries, the rise of similar parties as well. You would agree with what Donald Trump now calls his suggestion of banning all Muslims coming into the United States? Well, you know, um, I think, um, and I have to agree um, with that kind of policy, I believe that not all Muslims are bad people, but I believe that the Islam um, is something that um, goes um, not together with liberty and with freedom. And we have, with this open door policy of the last decades, in all of Europe, we have, without having any demands of assimilation of and integration, because of this political correctness of the millions of people who came to our society. And I always tell my American friends, if you let um, Islam being seeded on your soil, don't be surprised that you will harvest Sharia law. Islam, my friends, is indeed evil. Look at its so-called prophet Muhammad. He slaughtered Jewish tribes, he raped a young girl, he gave sex slaves as a gift to his henchmen, and he is still today an example for more than one billion Muslims worldwide. No wonder that some of his followers take to terrorism. Islam preaches hatred, propagates violence, and is barbaric and violent by nature. It wants all Muslims to submit. It is incompatible with freedom as we know it. And nothing, nothing will ever change that. That's why we should de-Islamize our societies 
in order to stay free nations. No appeasement, no concessions, but vigilance, perseverance and strength against barbarism is the one thing we should do. And I hope I believe there are two things that Americans should do. First, learn your lessons from Europe. Learn your lessons for Europe. Islam already arrived at America, but it's just don't think it's a long way before you become the second Europe. Islam will conquer before you know it. Be resilient, stand up and fight for your freedom and against Islam. And second, please, second, maybe the most important thing I ask Americans to do is re-elect President Donald J. Trump. Somebody had to do it. I am the chosen one. Somebody had to do it. So I'm taking on China. I'm taking Donald on Trump China. is running for president again in the United States, as you know. What advice would you give him? Que continúe con su lucha en contra del socialismo, porque es uno de los pocos que entendió cabalmente que la pelea es contra el socialismo, que la pelea es contra los estatistas y comprendió perfectamente que la generación de riqueza proviene del sector privado. Es decir, el Estado no crea riqueza, el Estado la destruye. El Estado no puede dar nada porque no produce nada y cuando lo quiere hacer además lo hace mal. Entonces, me parece que si yo, desde mi pequeño lugar lo, lo único que podría decirle es que redoble los esfuerzos en la misma dirección de defender las ideas de la libertad y de no darle tregua ni un solo segundo a los socialistas. Former U.S. President Donald Trump has a new side hustle. Hello everyone, this is Donald Trump, hopefully your favorite president of all time, better than Lincoln, better than Washington, with an important announcement to make. I'm doing my first official Donald J. Trump NFT collection right here and right now. They're called Trump Digital Trading Cards. These cards feature some of the really incredible artwork pertaining to my life and my career. It's been very exciting. You can collect your Trump Digital Cards just like a baseball card or other collectibles. The cards feature Trump depicted as a superhero, cowboy, and astronaut, among other things. Nice. What's next? Trump's White House Pokemon cards? At this stage, anything's possible. Oh, and uh, don't forget to vote for your favorite character of the year. Quick reminder, vote! vote. There is a, there is a, I mean, you know, I used to say, early on when I was a kid, I'd say, when I was a young senator, I'd say, if I were a Jew, I'd be a Zionist. I am a Zionist. You don't have to be a Jew to be a Zionist. The annual Hanukkah reception in the White House turned into a bastion of public support for Israel's war on Hamas. U.S. President Joe Biden vowed to continue military support for Israel in its continuing war to destroy Hamas in Gaza. Making no secret of whose side he's on in the war, Biden again declared he is a Zionist. You don't have to be a Jew to be a Zionist, and I'm a Zionist. You don't have to be a Jew to be a Zionist. Hanukkah is a timeless story of miracles. President Biden, do you want Ukraine to win this war? Yes or no? The worst thing I ever really saw was we were on a mission, we were taking some grunts out on the beachhead, and uh, there were some fishermen out in the ocean. And uh, a couple of our sergeants thought it would be a good sport to use them as target practice. So they swung their 50 calibers around, and uh, they just shot the shit out of them for no reason, I guess. And uh, I'm no better. A lot of times on mine sweep, we'd pass a lake, and there'd be fishermen in this lake. And uh, since we had nothing better to do, we'd fire M79 rounds at them, uh, 
16 rounds. Sometimes M60s, we call for a test fire. And, uh, you know, sort of aim their way, hoping we'd hit somebody. so I might sound a bit different, a bit off, but that's just how it is when working for God. There's always these um, constant silly attacks and problems, and yeah, uh, I guess with that out of, out of the way, <clears throat> let's continue. So just when you think that Kenneth Copeland could not become more demon-possessed, he comes out with this satanic performance. It's from a year ago or so. KCBC instructor, I've learned so much from this man about covenant and the covenants of blood, the different kinds of, of covenants. And the Lord directed me to demonstrate some things so that the next time you take communion, this will be in your mind's eye. Instead of just, what is this? So this is your cup. Yes, sir. This is my cup. So pour that in there. Okay. That's the cutting of the covenant. And then I would do the same. Jesus said, take this cup. This is my blood of the new covenant. Now we've mixed our blood. That's right. Which is his and which is mine. And we could never separate. You can't them. separate that. And that's what Jesus did to us. He cut a covenant with the Father. It became flesh and blood. And this is why he said, as often as you drink this, oh, yeah. we've partaken of his covenant 
and I'm part of that bloods in him. It's good stuff. Praise, praise God. So it's more than just a ritual we do. It's a holy thing. Oh, listen. Uh, and heals you. Now, now, now let, let me illustrate something else. Now, our blood has, symbolically has been mixed here. Now, at the communion table. Yes, sir. He said, this is my blood of the new covenant. All of you drink all of it. Judas had to drink that. Yes, sir. So, and I want you to be this way every time you take communion and you ought to take it a lot, a lot. Now his blood mm. is in my body. Yes, sir. It's in there. His blood is mixed with my blood. Can you see it? We've been, Western people don't know anything about covenant. Eastern people do. Amen. Now, before you go. Yes, sir. I want you to talk about looking down in his face. Oh, the priestly blessing. <laughs> May the Lord bless you and keep you, his face shine upon yes. you. You know that, yeah. the Levitical prayer. The priest would do his hands like this. Live long and prosper. <laughs> He'd do his hands like this over the person. And in the Orthodox tradition, you would kneel with your head down with your hands like this, because you would never look up at the priest because the priest represents God, because the priest represents God. The priest would do his hands like this, live long and prosper. <laughs> so it's more than just a ritual we do. It's a holy thing. Oh, listen. priest represents God. He's saying the blessing over you. Your head is in this position down. <clears throat> this is why you see people uh, in other countries come up to you and kneel in front of you. Yes. That's why. It's, it's a reverence. It's an honor. But we saw his star in the east and we have come. Listen. Stop. I'm not mad at Elon Musk. I understand I've been so demonized with the general public. He's barely able to keep Twitter going right now. I really appreciate what he's done. I admire him. I think he's done a lot of great work and, and I see him moving in the right direction. So a lot of people attack Musk on Twitter. Uh, you know, I trend all the time. Hey, if you're, if you're such an absolutist on free speech, bring back Alex Jones. I understand that if he did that, the ADL and others would really be able to, to probably shut down Twitter. So, so I understand that he needs to you know, go through a process before he does that. So people get mad at Twitter for not- Why the ADL? I, I don't, I'm not the world's expert on your career, but I, I know you. I've never heard you say a single anti-Semitic thing and an anti-Israel thing. Why would the ADL be against you? The left forever called everybody a racist if you were just a conservative or pro-Second Amendment or pro-life or thought we ought to have a border. And that didn't work anymore to call people racist. Just by the ADL calling up sponsors, sponsors get scared and drop. And so that's what they've done to Elon Musk. Morning, InfoWars host and conspiracy theorist Alex Jones has returned to the social media platform X owner Elon Musk. 
restored the account after he posted a poll yesterday asking users whether or not to reinstate Jones. It ended with more than 70% in the poll voting yes, nearly 2 million people. Hi, I'm Elon Musk and I'm hosting SNL This Week with musical guest Miley Cyrus. What's new with you, Elon? I just did a successful rocket launch this week. Hmm. Wow, well I did my laundry. Congrats. <laughs> Actually, no, I didn't. Because of uh, all of the, the, the metal and the weight and everything like that, but with the engines that you have, it's still, the 0 to 60 is pretty bizarre, right? It's like 3.5 or something like that? Or aiming to get the 0 to 60 below 3 seconds. Below 3? Yeah. Wow. For the, you know, the beast mode version. Having the vehicles fully charged matters because that's when you have your peak power. Making sure they're all fully charged really gets us on the same playing field. Uh, just go, you're just going full El Capone, you know, like and out on the you, side of the car, shotgun, 9 mil, 45. And you built it like this just for fun? Well, I mean, because uh, it's cooler. I mean, because you can. <laughs> you know, uh, trucks are supposed to be tough, right? Yeah. So, is your truck bulletproof? But wait, there's more. But wait, there's more. Thank you. Well, now we know. I don't mean to brag. I don't care. But I want you to know, double faxed booster, flu shot, and I'm going to be honest, I have the shingle shot too. And I still get my period. What? Yes. Traveled, went to Mexico twice, did shows, meet and greets, Never got COVID. Clearly, Jesus loves me the most. Seriously. So nice. So nice. And so you have probably heard or seen this new Civil War movie trailer that has got a lot of attention on the internet lately. Uh, it is produced by A24 Studios, which funds and makes very satanic and disturbing movies. You might see a clip here and there if I decide to throw them into the video, but some of those movies are so disgusting that I won't even bother giving them any attention and I don't recommend you watching these or any movies at all. It's all just predictive programming for the future. It's garbage, brainwashing. I stay as much as I can from this filth and I find zero enjoyment in this so-called entertainment. They make me mad, if I'm being honest. So I already know what's going to happen with this film. Here's my take on it. All the propaganda pumped throughout the years will finally take effect. And what do I mean by this? Well, most people, not knowing their Bibles, not studying, will say that Babylon USA has fallen. Once America falls, either economically or with uh, civil war or both, they'll say, see, 
Mystery Babylon has fallen, Revelation 18 has been fulfilled, and so they'll completely overlook the fact that Vatican City, the real Mystery Babylon, you know, is still standing and controlling the world through their political scheming. They'll completely cover it up for Roman Catholicism, and if in their mind Revelation 18 is fulfilled, because a lot of people spiritualized the events of the book of Revelation like crazy, they'll be waiting for Jesus, you see, but it's not Jesus. In reality, they are waiting for the Antichrist to show up. Uh, remember that military website, I think it was called Deagle, that came out years ago with a report which predicted that the American population would go down below 100 million? So, reduction of more than 75% of Americans? I think this military report came out in 2017, if not mistaken. And if Deagle is correct, we've got a few years for this to happen. Don't forget, the election cycle is coming up as well. But you know what's sad about it? I have seen people commenting below that trailer saying, well, yeah, I do not deny that this could happen, but more importantly, how can California and Texas unite in the civil war and they'll just laugh about it, They're not, not taking things seriously, not considering things. 19 states have seceded. The United States Army ramps up activity. The White House issued warnings to the Western forces as well as the Florida Alliance. The three-term president assures the uprising will be dealt with swiftly. Let me know if you want to try anything on. I guess I'm aware there's like a pretty huge civil war going on all across America. We just try to stay out with what we see on the news. Seems like it's for the best. Citizens of America. The so-called Western forces of Texas and California have suffered a very great defeat at the hands of the United States military. Mr. President, do you regret the use of airstrikes against American citizens? We're moving to DC today. We need to go down there. They shoot journalists on sight in the Capitol. Every instinct in me says this is death. Bloody. Every time I survived the war zone, I thought I was sending a warning home. Don't do this. But here we are. There's some kind of misunderstanding here. What? Right. Well, you're American, OK? OK. What kind of American are you? You don't know? <laughs> the Western forces will reach the White House on July 4th. Oh my god. Get in the car! Get in the car! Move, move, move! You're gonna hang back. I'm not hanging back. One nation under God. Indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Go, 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 go. God bless America. Leave the World Behind is another recent Hollywood flop and this film is conditioning Americans about a foreign cyber attack on the United States that shuts down all communications. Nothing's working like it used to, satellites are offline, there's no internet, the planes are crashing, everyone is left guessing what's going on because the government had abandoned them, that's what they say in the movie. In my line of work, you have to understand the patterns that govern the world. They can help you see the future. And I knew something was coming. I don't understand. What do you mean? The back country. We are seeing ongoing cyber attacks across the country. The truth is much scarier. 
What is the truth? We're gonna be okay, right? Aren't you the one who always said, if you're not paranoid by now, it's too late? Haven't you been picking up on what's going on out there? We've all been deserted. There is no going back to normal. You also see the bombs dropping in major cities. Some people get poisoned by the radiation and those who are still alive start to turn on each other because the movie implies that the propaganda was so strong that people divided into camps on who did it. Basically, it's another movie about civil war. So you didn't see anyone that might help us figure out what's happening here? No, I did not see anyone. But I did, I did see something. I, I saw, um, I, uh, it was this huge, um, drone, you know, up flying in the middle of nowhere, dropping off thousands of these. I, I have no idea what it says. Death to America. What? Death to America. I mean, I don't know what the rest of this means, but but this part, it definitely means death to America. I remember from a game I was playing. There were few scenes that talked about how maybe this was done by the global elite, but then it was said that even the global elite have fled to hide in their bunkers. Um, I suggest reading Revelation uh, 6, its last few verses, and you will see where they, they got this idea from in the movie. Eventually he starts in how much he likes me and how he wishes he could invite me on this trip he's about to go on. What, what, what kind of trip? Where is he going? That's exactly what I asked. And he turns to me with a serious face. And he says, Oh, you know, just my annual meeting with the rest of the evil cabal that runs the world. <laughs> he was the kind of guy that was always known for jokes like that. Again, if I told you his name, you would understand. Off my mind. And then, yesterday before the symphony, my friend calls me up. No scheduled appointment like he usually does, just calls me out of the blue. And wants me to move around some of his money. And we're talking some big numbers, even for him. And as we're getting off the phone, I asked if he wanted to grab a drink. He tells me he's going away for a while. I joke back to him. Oh yeah, you hanging with your evil cabal this weekend? Thought that was only during the winter solstice. <laughs> but he doesn't laugh. And he always laughs, even with bad jokes. All he said was, take care of yourself. Almost as if you felt sorry for me. Ever since I haven't been able to get it out of my head. The film also showed that the animals aren't afraid of man anymore. Also read Revelation 6 uh, verse 8 for context. Where the wild beasts will start killing men. So pretty much they're trying to foreshadow to show the future but they fail at doing so because in reality it will be much worse. Also, I find it funny how in every movie, and this one is no exception, they say something racist like, if the world is falling apart, you shouldn't be giving your trust to others, especially white people. My point remains, I don't trust them. I'm not gonna let anything happen to you if that's what you're asking. I'm asking for you to remember that if the world falls apart, trust should not be dulled out easily to anyone especially white people. Even mom would agree with me on that. I got it. I don't know if it's true or rumors, 
but allegedly Elon Musk is very unhappy with how this movie portrayed his unmanned Tesla vehicles. I don't know how that would be possible if a cyber attack actually happened, but these Teslas got hacked and blocked the bridges and highways ramming into each other and pretty much that's how they blocked the roads. And there was one little girl in the film and all she wanted to do, <laughs> even when the world is falling apart, she wanted to know how Friends uh, last episode ended. And this was all that she did in the whole movie. Pretty much showing brainwashed, self-oriented youth. Oh, and she had a, a uh, NASA shirt. Yeah. Before we go, I need to know that you're on a level with me. No matter how far this thing goes, I need to know that we're good. Because of what just happened here is happening everywhere. We need to get to that bunker Danny told us about and we need to get there now. What are you talking about? You know something. I had a sneaking suspicion, but I wanted more information first. All sides were there, sure, but I... I didn't want to scare anyone. You would have called me crazy because it is crazy. It would have made more sense if we were on the brink of an all-out invasion. But this... I didn't think we'd actually let something like this happen. I thought we were smarter than that. Let what happen? Because my primary client works in the defense sector, I spent a lot of time studying the cost-benefit analysis of military campaigns. There was one program in particular that terrified my client the most. A simple three-stage maneuver that could topple a country's government from within. First stage was isolation. Disable their communication and transportation. Make the target as deaf, dumb, and paralyzed as possible. And setting them up for the second stage. Synchronized chaos. Terrorize them with covert attacks and misinformation. Overwhelming their defense capabilities, leaving their weapon systems vulnerable to extremists in their own military. Without a clear enemy or motive, people would start turning on each other. Done successfully, the third stage would happen on its own. What's the third stage? A coup d'etat. Civil War. Collapse. This program was considered the most cost-effective way to destabilize a country. Because if the target nation was dysfunctional enough, it would, in essence, do the work for you. started this wants us to finish it. I want to say thank you to all of you who decided to get my wooden bookmarks. I'm hoping that you were not disappointed by them. Please let me know in the comments if everything was fine with your package and if it reached you safely without any additional problems. I was doing this sort of thing on Etsy for the first time and if some of you can, please leave a rating on my page. I would very much appreciate that. Thank you once again. And if you can, um, like the video, hopefully you enjoyed it and I will do my best to recover physically from this illness. I would really appreciate your prayers and I'll be seeing you in the next one. Have a great day.